Hey, welcome back everyone, Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. In today's video, I'll be drawing this fan art of Catwoman and talking about the process. So this is a time-lapse from the Procreate app using the iPad Pro. Uh, so let's jump on in and watch the process. So what I first like to do is draw out a basic thumbnail sketch. I started a little bit bigger with this one then I my memory kind of kicked in like, no, the best routine is the smaller sketch. So these are actually really small on my screen right now, but I blew them up so you could see them a bit more clearly. But I do want to stress smaller is better, uh, mainly because you're able to draw in the scene faster so you're not married to any bad decisions or details. Uh, and then you can kind of see it from a distance, which helps you with composition. Now at this point, I've blown it up and brought it up closer, so I'm working full screen uh, on the canvas on the iPad. And uh, people always ask, so I'll tell you, it's an iPad 12.9. Uh, I think it's the fourth generation. I don't know. I, I don't think it matters much. I started with the second generation, and it works the same. I think it's a faster processor or something, but the, the Apple uh, Pencil 2, but not a big deal. It all works kind of the same. But this right here is uh, a part that I wanted to talk about. So I use like these little grid patterns to work on symmetry. I really wasn't feeling it. I was struggling with the symmetry. So then I ultimately just said to heck with it. And I started using the symmetry tool with the, within Procreate. So it works uh, just like the perspective guide, but you draw from one side of the line, it mirrors the other. Uh, I did try to uh, bounce back and forth and still redraw one of the eyes. So what, I'm, what I wanted to really point out there is that these tools are fantastic for helping you in tough spots but I want you to really think about working freehand as much as possible so that you don't become too inhibited by them or relying upon them. Uh, so I drew out the grid here on a new layer, but then I start freehanding the background. And now looking at it in retrospect, I kind of liked where it was going right here. And I ultimately land back on this, but you see, I got uh, a little bit confused with it, pulled away for a bit, started drawing on Catwoman again, and then I go back to it. But the part I like about drawing freehand over the grid anyways, is that you tend to get more expressive layouts and details. It's much like the thumbnailing process. And I use the ink brush, not the pencil, not the sketching uh, technical pencil. Uh, and I'll make sure to link the brushes in the description box below for it. I've got a free set on my Gumroad. But again, I like using an ink pen uh, version for you know digital ink pen. Uh, because it's a more immediate line and I think that helps with expressing the ideas quickly on the page and again maneuvering through it almost in the same way you would a thumbnail that you want to hurry up express those ideas uh, get the bad ones out of the way as you can see I keep making poor decisions with the buildings and redrawing it and I ultimately start to uh, compromise on the look that I wanted and I started to design the buildings a little bit less gothic and a little bit more basic and modern and uh, then I like right here, you can see these are very basic uh, buildings. And then I'm like, wait a second, no, I can't do that. This is Catwoman. It's got to at least be hints of Gothic architecture, or it just doesn't sell the piece, right? It doesn't explain the the, the storytelling as well. She's in a very Gothic setting. In fact, even with the ones I end up on, I feel like I still need to learn more about them. So now, after all those revisions of messing up, I finally land on. Uh, you know, I kind of find my zone, I guess, and I start to get more comfortable with what I'm looking for. Uh, now, so ways to get through that, obviously, are to look at reference, look at art that inspires you, do some specific studies of window patterns and shapes that you might see in uh, that specific type of architecture. Uh, but at the end of the day, the thing that I would say helps the most is just don't stop sketching. Don't give up on yourself. You know, at least find something that you really like in the piece that you can, uh, you, you know, use that for motivation because you don't want to waste that or something. But at the same time, keep drawing through it and you'll be amazed that you'll eventually figure something out. I mean, that's what I basically felt here. Like I was really struggling. There's a couple points I wanted to give up. Now, keep in mind, too, I've been drawing for over 30 years and I still experience this. I want to really hit that home for you guys because I don't like the artists that you know, just, just like kind of glance over their, uh, the problem areas of their work and they just talk about or just kind of showcase the success story of what they become. It takes a long time to get there and there's always holes in every artist's game. I don't care how good you are. You know, I've got a lot to learn. I'll be the first one to say that. 
Uh, so I just want you to, as a newer artist that might be watching this video, I want you to think about that. Like allow yourself to just keep going down that road and developing your, your skill set further. And don't worry too much. The main thing is you just keep drawing, just keep logging in the miles basically. Uh, so now I'm at the inking stage. I like to lay over a, uh, a blue line. Uh, I'm sorry, I convert the lines to blue. And the way that I do that is I add a layer. I set the blending mode of that layer to uh, screen mode. And you can flood fill it whatever color you want. I like this kind of bluish aqua color. And then I'll add another layer on top of that and I'll start inking. So basically anything that's below that blue layer will be converted to blue. Remember, you don't have to select the whole layer as well. Uh, you can isolate parts of it. I end up doing that for the hand. So uh, you can select just an area of the work, flood it blue. Uh, you can also flood it white first with a separate layer. Uh, and then that way you can control the, the depth of the opacity. You can also control that by two finger tapping on the previous lines, pulling to the left or right to adjust the opacity, which in turn will adjust the light or darkness of the blue in a sense because it's, it's working off the darkness of that sketch layer. Um, underneath it so now I'm obviously you know inking some of the buildings one thing I will say here is with the perspective lines you want to use them but you also want to mix in a lot of freehand in fact there's areas that I started to feel like as I was maneuvering through this I should have did a lot more freehanding so basically laying out a tighter version of a grid uh, in certain areas and then on a separate layer inking over top of that freehand because what I'm doing here is I'm basically drawing some lines in with the perspective guide, uh, but then I'm going back and I'm having to edit that because bricks are just not that clean and perfect, especially when you're talking about older architecture. You don't wanna have all these ruled lines that really flatten out and suck the life right out of the architecture. So, uh, you know, some good examples are just watch people draw uh, entirely freehand. It looks messy at first, but they pull it together and it's pretty amazing. So you have to, again, utilize these tools in a way where they benefit you. They help you through these problem areas of your work, but then you also have to try to challenge yourself to do as much freehand as possible because it will add more life to the work. Uh, so yeah, I feel like I, I kind of used too many ruled lines. I do copy and paste some windows as well. And a technique for that, if you can't see it because it's moving too fast, I'm copying a window that matches a, a specific sidewall and I'm dropping in some lines uh, as perspective grids and then uh, distorting that to match those lines. So for instance, if you have a window in the top left, you might draw some grids going downward and then across from certain uh, reference points, the top of the window, side of the window, bottom of the window, whatever. And then you use that when you distort that new window into place, it'll match the perspective. Um, again, I, I challenge you to, you know, uh, try to draw them freehand as much as possible, but it is a time-saving technique. It definitely helps with things like bricks and repetitive building details. So I shared some of this work in the community tab and I had some great questions from you guys and I really appreciate you giving me that, that feedback so that I can go into these videos knowing what to answer. One of the questions was, uh, what do you do when you start running out of layers? So I work at 11 by 17 at 300 DPI. I think it yields roughly about 35 layers uh, on my setup. Now, the thing is, is that I really don't usually need that many unless I, you know, I take the full artwork all the way to color. One of the things I kind of get around that problem is not only is uh, do I merge the artwork down as I'm moving forward, uh, but I also, if I get back to a corner where I'm running out of layers and I still got a lot to do, I'll go into the gallery and I'll duplicate the file. So now what happens there, I've got that previous file with the layers and it kind of you know stops at that point in time right and then i work on the new one and i delete a bunch of layers why because i know i have that previous document as a backup to grab the layers if i really needed it so it, and you know i can't say that i've ever had to go back and grab them it's it's a it's more of a confidence thing and that's really what it is when you watch artists that you know do this for a living that draw comics day in and day out and they fly right through it a big part of getting good at any of this stuff is you know, taking the training wheels off and just going for it. Uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll work yourself out of a corner anyways. So, and you'll get some good artwork through that process, but you have to gain confidence through just doing it. Uh, I think the same thing is with layers and these tools. It's the same thing. It's like use them, but then get used to using them less and less. 
Uh, I've seen lots of artists that create amazing detailed artwork and they work off one, two, and three layers and they keep merging stuff down. It's amazing. And you gotta remember, there's lots of ways to edit the work with these tools. So you just have to get more comfortable with editing your, your way out of a problem situation. So with this uh, piece of architecture at top middle build, and you see I jump away from it, I bounce around a lot, especially you can probably tell it when I start to struggle with something, I move away from it. And so I come back to it and I'm trying to figure out the, the architectural style I wanted here. I really should have pulled more reference, uh, but I was trying to just you know pull it off of memory and imagination, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it really let me know that I need to study this more. So I need to fill up my sketchbooks with lots of Gothic and Victorian and Celtic and designs and, and really take the time to study the window patterns and the wall designs and the peaks of the roofs and the way that the, uh, the roofs intersect. Um, I feel that this is a, a pretty good piece, but it could have been a lot better. And so one of the things with this one was it took me like 20 hours. And I just think that's a bit ridiculous for pencils and inks. Um, you know, you can tell me what you think. I, I'm happy overall with the piece, but I need to get faster. And, and uh, back to the confidence thing, a big part of it is not having to search so endlessly in your mind for ideas and just knowing when to say, look, reference is a good thing. Let me pull that. Let me move faster through this. Let me look at some books, uh, you know, some Batman comics and really pull from those ideas and allow myself to just move through that faster without trying to figure things out. Sometimes I get in these ruts where I want to just figure it out on my own. And that's not the most productive use of your time. Uh, not to mention, you're going to learn by looking at the reference, redrawing it uh, as you transform it into your own style, you're going to learn immensely through that process anyways. So just go for that immediately if you feel yourself struggling. Uh, and then also remember to go back and revisit that area of your work with your studies, with your sketchbooks, uh, so that later on you can do it more from memory. All right, so another one of the questions that I had was, when do you uh, spot in the blacks? How do you know where to put those highlights and shadows? So you can see I went real light with the shadows and I basically just put shadows in the backgrounds and the inset of the windows. Uh, I figured I could fill in a lot of this with color techniques. So with her, uh, I just kind of went for a very specular effect. So generally I would go for a single uh, point of light. In this case, we'll say the side of her leg. The big opening of the side of her leg would be a major light source, right? But because the suit is so specular, I have light sources all over the place. So there's a light source on the top of the leg, bottom of the leg. Now the neat thing about this is when you go to color it, there's a lot of options there, but it's a bit confusing to say, okay, you know, where are you really putting the shadows and why? Uh, what I can tell you is that a lot of times when I draw characters like this, I'm thinking of certain artists that I like the way they render a certain way, and that's where I've kind of picked it up. So ones that I can name specifically for this way, it would be like Brett Booth uh, and J. Scott Campbell. So they usually go with a, a little bit more of an overly specular way of shading and highlighting where it's kind of all over a bit, but it colorizes really well. Uh, it's obviously still very interesting and dynamic to look at. It's maybe a little bit less correct at times. I, I would say, uh, especially with Brett Booth, even though I'm not down his work, his work is stunning and amazing. It's just very stylized. And so you got to remember that you do have your uh, specific way to use light and shadow, but you can still take it into style. A book I really recommend for light and shade is uh, Bern Hogarth's Dynamic Light and Shade. I'll be bringing you guys more videos on that topic uh, pretty soon as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's content. I would really love to know what you think. And please like, share, and subscribe, uh, and comment so that I know what you're digging and, and you know what else you want to see in the future, what type of characters. I'll bring you more fan art, more tutorials, stuff like that. So thanks for tuning in and watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.